ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فاز فوزا عظيما I bear witness to the oneness of Allah to his magnificence his omnipotence his might his glory to his being the creator and sustainer of all things the giver of life the guider of hearts the master of the day of judgment and I bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam is his final messenger apostle and prophet may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him his fam- his family his companions and upon all those who choose to tread in his path until the last day from abad alhamdulillah i enjoin you and myself first and foremost to have taqwa of allah to be aware of allah to fear allah to be conscious of allah and make sure that allah is at the center of our entire orientation and everything that we do and we thank allah for gathering us together and manifesting the taqwa that we have of him coming together on the day of juma to participate in this khutbah and we pray that he's gathering us to earn his pleasure and that he's not only gathered us as as individuals but he's gathered us as hearts i want to talk today imam ghazali has a lot to teach us about the heart and we would do well in listening to him so i want to talk today about the heart and the question i have for everyone is what is the state of your heart what is the state of your heart If I choose to talk about something, let's say I chose to talk about wealth, then some of us might be blessed with wealth and some of us might not. If I went and talked about the taking advantage of our youth, some of us might be youth, some of us might not. If I talked about some struggle or addiction that we have, some of us might have that, some of us might not. But every single one of us has been blessed by Allah with a heart and we're supposed to take care of our heart. And so I want to ask you what is the state of your heart? because if we look in the west the west the western world doesn't really think about the heart much as long as it's beating it's fine they consider it just a piece of flesh but in our religion the heart is not just not a piece of flesh it's it's the seat of our soul we consider in islam that the heart is the seat of our soul when the prophet uh, when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the quran upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he didn't reveal it upon his mind or his aql or his brain he revealed it upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's heart and the heart keep is what keeps us alive not just physically but it keeps us alive spiritually as well and even if we look at the heart in terms of physical matter and physical form it's still an incredible and remarkable thing the heart that we have on an average beats 60 to 70 times every minute that we are alive in the course of our day it's beating over 100,000 times in that time it's pumping over 2,000 gallons of our blood across about 6 uh, about 60,000 uh, miles of vasculature so the heart is an incredible thing 60,000 miles is two times the circumference of the earth and not only is the heart doing all of this it's also the one organ in our body that operates completely independent of the central nervous system which affects every other part of our body so that means that if the heart is removed in some cases with open heart surgeries and such they do that the heart still continues to, to beat so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made even the physical heart a sign for us that this is an important organ that we have and the heart is also the only thing that does not stop to rest at any point in our lives every other muscle every other organ every other limb will take rest will will stop at some point to rest to recover but the heart through our 40 50 60 70 80 years of life however long allah has blessed us to live he has allowed the heart to function for us and in this is an incredible blessing it's and a lot of people you know people seek miracles all the time they they do all kinds of ridiculous things to to find miracles they get high they do drugs and and they seek out experiences but all you have to do is put your hand on your chest and feel your heartbeat 
When was the last time you did that? The heart is an incredible thing. So if you want to experience a miracle, just remember the physicality of your heart. It's a reminder. It's a sign for us. It's also a reminder of our death because at some point, this little piece of flesh that's still only the size of our palm will stop beating as well. So the heart, in just the remembrance of the heart, there's a lot to remember. But the heart is not just physical flesh, as I mentioned. It's what makes us who we are. There's a spiritual dimension to the heart. And the Prophet ﷺ, when a companion came to him and asked him about um, something, whether something was right or wrong, the Prophet ﷺ told him, istafti qalbak, consult your heart. Literally, it means seek fatwa from your heart. Gain an opinion, ask your heart to determine when he was questioning something right or wrong. And this is contingent upon having a sound heart because a sound heart that is sound and in line it will be in harmony with the intention of Allah, with the will of Allah. So the heart is a very important spiritual cognitive capacity that we have. And the Prophet ﷺ tells us that a sound heart, when it comes to something that is right, there's tranquility that's found in it. And if there's something wrong, it'll bring unrest and, and trouble in the heart. So at this point, um, it's important to mention a beautiful analogy that Imam Ghazali brings. Imam Ghazali wrote a 40-volume collection called the Ihya Ulum al-Din, amongst his dozens and dozens of other books. And this is remarkable. How many of us can even sit through 40 books, just reading them? And he's written 40 of them for us to take from and benefit from. His 21st book is called Ajayab al-Qalb, or The Marvels of the Heart, The Wonders of the Heart. And in it, he's talking about the inner secrets that, that is the heart. And he gives us a way to look at the heart. So the analogy he gives is that the heart is like a mirror. And if you look at a mirror, um, what does a mirror do? It reflects. Usually we look at mirror and it reflects us. And so the heart to Imam Ghazali is like a mirror and what it's supposed to reflect is the light of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the light of the divine, the light of guidance, the light of the Prophet And that's the function of the heart. That's the purpose of the heart. But what can happen to a mirror? You know, we've all seen our mirrors cloud up, maybe after taking a shower. So our mirrors can cloud up. They can get dirty. They can get muddy. They can get rusty. They can even shatter and they can break. So the, the, what he says is that we are supposed to take care of our hearts. We have to make sure that it doesn't get cloudy. And the way we do that is by polishing the heart, polishing the mirror uh, that is the heart. And the polish of the heart is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is dhikr. So by doing dhikr, by keeping Allah in our minds, we keep our hearts open to what it's supposed to do, which is reflect the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gives us another analogy. He gives us another example that the heart is like a command center. It's like the headquarters for the armies. And the armies are the rest of our limbs and our body. And so the hands are armies. The tongue is an army. The, the mouth and the ears, these are all limbs. And they, whatever they do, they go out. It affects the state of our hearts. So every action that we take, with whichever organ that we're using uh, and limb that we're using to partake in that action, it has an effect on our hearts, either positive or, either, or negative. And so it's, it's important for us to, to consider what is the state of our heart um, and how are we using these limbs of ours because we all know that uh, there are sins and usually the sins that we think of are physical sins that we take part with our, with our bodies. Either it's something like stealing or killing which we do with our hands, it's backbiting or slander that we do with our tongues, it's with what we listen to or what we gaze at that we're not supposed to listen to or gaze at. So usually what we think of when we think of sin are physical things. But there's also this, this uh, aspect of the, what we call the sins of the heart, that the heart can actually take actions as well. And the sins of the heart include the seven deadly sins, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, uh, laziness, and, and so forth. So we have to be cognizant and aware of the states of our hearts and the sins that our hearts partake in beyond just the sins that our limbs partake in. And um, starting off where... Um, ending where I started off, I remind and remind each and every one of you to consider and question what is the state of your heart with all of this in mind. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah, wa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. We've been speaking about the heart and the importance of, of having sound hearts. Um, it's a bit of an abstract and theoretical discussion, uh, discussion, so I wanted to bring it back to something very practical that most of us are dealing with, especially the young people. 
we live in the digital age, and this age, one that part, what's part and parcel of the digital age is social media. We live in an age of social media where people, um, there's so many social media uh, platforms like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat and so forth. So I've been thinking about this a lot, and I really think that when social media debuted and came out, Shaitan had a field day. He was like having the time of his life because he's like, how can I use this to drive people away from the remembrance of Allah. And I'm not arguing that social media is inherently evil. You know, we're all on it, and, and there's an argument to be made of why we should be on it. But what we have to remember and be aware of is that the doors it opens up for us, or the doors it opens up for evil, uh, and we really have to be cognizant of that. I'll give you an example. If you wanted to backbite 20, 30, 40 years ago, you would have to have another person to backbite with, or, or slander, right? But now, all you need is to be sitting behind your phone, talking on the phone, be on a YouTube comment, and you can slander and backbite all you want. All these internet trolls, that's exactly what they're doing. It's a manifestation of this sin, which is backbiting, that social media and technology has opened up for us. Similarly, um, if you look at the example of showing off, this is sin of the heart, showing off, ostentation. Showing off, at some point, you would have to go outside of your house and go, or invite people to your house, and then manifest showing off by doing something. Now all you have to do is post an Instagram photo or a Facebook photo. So social media has opened up the doors for us to sin in, in many, many ways, and we have to be careful of that. I, I've been thinking about this, and it's like every single one of the seven deadly sins you can find on social media. And some of the social media platforms are more inclined to certain sins over others. So it's something we really have to be aware of. Every single, we, and someone should you know, endeavor to write a book about the dangers of social media, and what are the spiritual sins are manifested in the social media. And then think about that until now, maybe I'll do that at some point. So we have to realize that social media is not some neutral entity. We have to think about the fact that these companies are hiring marketing professionals, social media managers, engineers, computer scientists, some of those careers we might pursue ourselves to what to do what? To get us to buy into their platform, to be addicted to their platform, and just stay on for just six more seconds so that when we scroll down, we scroll down to the next post and continue doing that over and over again. Why? To sell us products. Because it's commodifying us. It's commodifying our attention and making it something for their benefit. And we really have to wonder, like, are we, is this social media driving us towards Allah or away from Allah? Are, are the people we're following, are they the people of Allah? Are they the righteous people and the pious people? Are they reminding us to be remembered of Allah? Or are we uh, following things that deviate and take us away from Allah, whether towards sin or even just new, like uh, not being, uh, not remembering Allah. So we really have to be aware of, of who we follow, what we like. Um, there's a saying, uh, and it might be attributed to the Prophet, I'm not entirely sure, that tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. And I was thinking about this and it's like nowadays all you can say is show me your news feed or show me your social media feed and I can tell you who you are. Because it really reflects, and that's why the advertisements that they show can be so accurate to what we're interested in. Because what social media and these people are doing is that they're trying to take our attention, taking our interest, and it really manifests who we are. So we have to make sure that not only the way we walk out and when we dress, it reflects who we are. We also have to make sure our social media reflects who we are. We have to make sure to follow good people, righteous people. A lot of our teachers and scholars are on social media. There are a lot of good forms of entertainment that are on social media. We have to be cognizant of, of making sure that that's what's keeping our attention. And because the thing is that there's a war being waged with our attention, especially the young people. And it's not just social media, it's also video games and movies and TV and music. I mean, I'm sure all the young people here play Fortnite and it's a tragedy in my mind, you know, like hours and hours and hours that are going away spending playing one video game. Uh, and they're doing the same thing over and over again. And, and these things are meant to be addictive. And in that time, we could be remembering Allah, we could be memorizing Quran, but even beyond this uh, spiritual and religious stuff, we could be learning new skills, we could be benefiting people, we could be improving ourselves, and all it's doing is distracting and taking us away from all of those things. And so if we want to have sound hearts and pure hearts and be attentive to the remembrance of Allah, we have to be careful and be aware of what social media is doing to us. We have to be careful about what we're consuming because... Um, there's so much haram music out there. So there's so many haram uh, movies and videos, and probably the majority of these things are unacceptable. So we have to do our best and find good forms of entertainment uh, that's out there. And there are plenty of options. I mean, I get in trouble a lot for, uh, I won't stop talking about this show on Netflix. It's called Resurrection Air Tool. And I'm sure many of you have watched it, and to those who haven't, you know, really check it out. It's much better than Game of Thrones and all of the other 
terrible shows that are out there. It's a Turkish show that tells the story of um, Ertuğrul Ghazi, who was the father of Osman I, who founded the Ottoman Empire. It's an incredible show that I, I just did a podcast with a friend of, of mine about it, and it's like it can teach us so much about being Muslim because it's showing us lived Islam. These people are praying and they're fasting and they're going out and fighting uh, the enemy and they're going and, and it shows you how to be a father, it shows you how to be a son, a wife, a husband. It, it really reflects and manifests our values and there's nothing dirty about it, there's nothing unclean, there's nothing filthy in the entire show. So there are things like this that, there are great alternatives that are being created. That's just one of them that we can, we can spend our time with. And yeah, of course we can have entertainment, we can have fun, but we should incline towards those things that bring us back to the remembrance of Allah and allow us to have a pure heart and a sound heart and a clean heart. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows us to, to have purified hearts. Ya muqallib al-qulub, sabbit qulubun ala deenik. Ya muqallib al-qulub, sabbit qulubun ala ta'atik. Ya Allah, make us firm and our hearts firm upon your religion and upon your obedience. Ya Allah, uh, purify our hearts, keep our hearts clean, keep the hearts clean of our youth and for the elders and allow us to turn back to you at every moment. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad kama salli ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala Sayyidina Ibrahim inna ka hamidu majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad kama barakta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala Sayyidina Ibrahim inna ka hamidu majid. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Fatihi lima uhlik wal khatimi lima sabak nasir al-haq bil-haq wal hadi ila siratika al-mustaqim wa ala alihi haqqa qadrihi wa maqdarihi al-adhin. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yisifun. Wassalamun ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Atum as-salam.